It is the day preceding Thursday, my dudes. And you know what that means. Yes, that means it's time once again to revisit Neptune Park. I nearly said Crimson Tower. <laughs> uh, but it's time to revisit Neptune Park. And here's a little bit of footage I found floating around on the hard drive. You know, you may have men remember. You may remember. Great start. A few episodes ago, I built this suspension bridge and say, I, I said that I didn't like the colour too much. And then I eventually changed it to a darker green. Well, lo and behold, I found the footage that shows me recolouring it, so here it is here. Now you know. Now you know. <laughs> so there's a little shot of the finished bridge there. Another little miss- uh, this the beginning of this episode, the, the focus of this episode is constructing this children's play area. But uh, I'm kind of starting the episode with some kind of admin clips that I kind of need to show in order to- well, I don't need to show, but just to provide some context about how those various different projects ended up finishing off so well i say various projects i'm talking about the bridge i'm talking about the oblivion roller coaster uh i tried i tried oh sorry i lost my train of thought i heard this weird sound coming outside it was just an ice cream pan ice cream van passing by do you guys have that in america i guess you do because i've always seen like jokes about kids screw ice cream on the internet and i guess britain is too small a country for it to occur exclusively do you ever that thing when like you were younger and parents would lie to you and say, you know, if the ice cream man is playing music, that means he's run out of ice cream. I I never had that personally, but apparently that's quite a common lie among parents. So if you've got kids or are planning on having kids, you're welcome. And anyway, where was I? Yes, just finishing off the um, just finishing off the rest of Oblivion Black Hole. As I mentioned, I may have mentioned this already actually, but it was funny. I tried to um, add Black Hole to the title of last week's video or whenever I built the vertical. Was it last week's video? I think it was the week before, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I lose track. It all kind of blends into one because I kind of make these out of order. So I'm never quite sure which ones I've made. Um, but yeah, I think it came out last week where I built the vertical drop worker the week before. And uh, yeah, I tried to put the words black hole in the title and the tags, but I have this uh, Chrome extension called TubeBuddy, which is really good, invaluable if you make YouTube videos. And it came with this one say, warning your video will get demonetized because of these reasons. And it was like, number one, you have the word black hole in your title, which I thought was like, oh, because of the word holes. And I just amalgamated it into one, just black hole, one word. And that was still enough to flag, because I guess... That could have some. I won't elaborate <laughs> what that could be could be interpreted as, but I thought that was kind of funny that as such a ubiquitous term as black hole could be considered unsuitable for advertisers. But there you go. Such is the world we live in. So there's just the black hole finish. Really, just I built the little backstage area for the staff and polished up, polished up the little uh, the shop because the real uh, black hole oblivion oblivion black hole <laughs> has a little shop underneath its station. So I thought it follows suit, given that this is kind of a soft recreation sort of thing. So then we're just doing some ground painting. Ground painting is one of those things that can really uh, aid to the realism of your park. It doesn't seem like it would be much at first and you don't really get the results very quickly but as you kind of persist with it and do more and more you get a really nice effect overall. So this is me here. We're just by the train station for um, a geographical location of where we are and yeah I'm starting out with these animatronic people just to kind of give me a scale of a human. Obviously this is designed for kids so we don't really need to build this to the scale of adults but you know in case a child gets stuck or we have like one of these like an eccentric stag dude decide to pay enough money to have the whole park rented out for themselves and they want to get drunk and play on the play area. Uh, also, but you don't have to be drunk to own players. Um, then they, they can facilitate now. I don't even really know what I'm trying to say with this. But uh, either way, this has, that's why I've got those anim animatronic people there just to kind of provide scale of how big this thing probably ought to be. <laughs> so building players in this game, it's basically just picking all the scenery pieces and just carefully arranging them. The actual building pieces themselves don't really, they're not small enough a scale to kind of accurately build things to the scale of a player. So you kind of have to use the wooden plank pieces to build out the structure yourself. So it takes a little bit of time and patience, but I think... I think it's worth it overall. So, I've, well, actually, I've never built one before, but uh, I notice it's kind of a, a sort of kind of a trend among Planet Coaster builders to build little um, play areas. And I guess a lot of theme parks do have little play areas to play in, because what else would you do other than take pictures? No, we're not going to go down that route. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just building out a little platform here. There's not a lot for me to say about it. I, I just think about play areas. One of my favourite places when I was growing up, we're talking when I was very young, is this place called Conkers. And it's a little park in Derbyshire, I think. And it has this amazing, it's like a, it's like a sort of eco-centre sort of place. It's just like, kind of like science, learning, naturism, naturism, like eco-science eco and all that, you know, like wind turbines and stuff. Um, 
it was kind of a small, it's a very low budget sort of place, but it has this amazing play area in the middle of a forest. It's great. So I was kind of had that in the back of my mind as sort of the muse for this. I guess also the main thing, it would be uh, the playground of Wicksteed Park as well, which is a little, a little theme park that's not too far from my birthplace, <laughs> my place of birth, my hometown would have been a less weird choice of words there. So kind of that's, that's what I had in back in my mind. So those parks, they have like a really tall wooden tower with kind of branching structures coming off of it and like big metal slides coming off of it as well. So that's kind of the muse. I don't know if you guys might have, because I'm guessing obviously you're American uh, or a good proportion of you are. And I guess America is quite a hot country in places. In England, it's quite common in parks, at least when I was growing up. I think it's they've gone, well, I guess plastics now are falling out of fashion again, isn't it? But when I was growing up, a lot of slides in parks were like these metal, these uh, modular metal tubes. They would get quite hot in the summer, which is why I'm thinking places like Texas might not elect to go for this method of building slides. But who I don't know, I'm not an expert in the slide industry. Never claimed to be. <laughs> but um, that's kind of what we're going for here. I love how I'm talking about all this stuff before I've even built the roof of the first Pat Tower. This is time that's pretty much as fast as I can go, but that goes to show the uh, the painstaking process of building these sorts of structures separately. So kind of building one side of the roof and then using, um, I just built a random grid bound piece and then placed that. And that meant I could rotate it accurately 90 degrees. It's very hard to rotate it using the rotate tool 90 degrees, you know, like the advanced move tool, unless you're also rotating a piece that's bound to the grid. So just get them oriented right and then just slide them over to, uh, to their final destination probably not a word I want to be associating my children's play area with, but whatever. So now we're going to time to be constructing the main tower. So I kind of built this opt octagon shape at first and then just, you know, pay, not painstakingly, but just built out a little wooden floor using planks. And there we go. So one side of the cross, other side of the cross, and then we can fill in the uh, the little gaps that remain. I think, I think that's quite a neat a neat little structure overall, actually kind of a satisfying satisfying appearance, I'd say. So then we can just copy it once to get it to the level of that little bridge and then keep copying it up and then we'll uh, we'll cut some holes into the <laughs> cut some holes into the floor so uh, kid, the kids can ascend to the top to get to the watchtower at the top, or I guess that's the top deck of the watchtower, and then you know go on the big slide at the top and have a have a grand a grand old time. In fact, if I was a kid, I was, this is the sort of thing I would do. We'd just like climb to the top and just have a look at the train tracks. I don't know why I was just, I was obsessed with trains when I was growing up. Well, not obsessed with trains, but like whenever I saw a train, it was an amazing experience. I don't know why. I guess cause it was a novelty because you don't, see, I, I didn't grow up near tracks. So it was always a novelty to see trains because you see planes and cars obviously a lot. But trains, you know, something magical about trains right is that weird <laughs> okay whatever so there's the main flooring done now we can just go ahead and build the roof it was quite hard to build the roof for this one because you, you can't really build an octagon shaped roof particularly easy or at least my building skills that's <laughs> the skills i have when it comes to building is not very easy so i kind of just built a four-way one and then just rotated it around to get the eight-way symmetry version filled in one side and then kept on duplicating that one side over and over until we had it copied nicely all around but it was hard to get the angle right because you can see you know the angle that those two beams form isn't perfect when it comes to placing a flat plank between them so you can kind of see me sort of winging it here but i think it were i think it all came together in the end it all came together in the end and you can see there in the background actually how close we are to the base of the blue towers it could be that you know kids that are scared of heights they could come and stand in this tower instead or you know i don't know what else but it's kind of nice that the because the area around the tower i wanted to keep fairly barren it'd be like a little park in the middle of the park as in like you know like a a normal city park would be like just a big open space of grass and benches and stuff so that kind of helps aid to that illusion by having this play area here as well so the main center of this park is to be quite plain and open to kind of showcase the actual main structure of the tower and then if we get things will get more claustrophobic and, cramp, claustrophobic and cramped towards the outskirts of the park but there we go there's the main tower pretty much a finished obviously we still need to add the uh the slides and some sort of way to prevent children from falling off the edges i think might be of benefit here so we can place those now and then we can go ahead and build the slides so the slide is built from these um art pieces i don't know if it would be now more appropriate to build it using the coaster support pieces because you can achieve a much more realistic look the art pieces, they don't go up in very small increments. So to get these kind of like uh, rib pieces, you know, those connecting parts that connect each modular component, 
you can't really get a very effective way of doing that with arc shapes unless you just copy one and offset it slightly and then make a bunch of them to kind of give this illusion that it's a perfectly round shape, whereas the new coaster support pieces that have been added, they do have parts that are very similar in diameter like that, so you can emulate those modular connecting parts quite easily. So maybe I should go back and retrospectively change this, but to be honest, I think this, I think it was pretty convincing in the end. It looks pretty good. The only thing that was quite difficult to do was kind of make it look like this was a tunnel, not just an art piece, so I kind of had to take these little black, uh, black circles and kind of create this pseudo tunnel effect, which is obviously never going to be completely perfect because it has to be sort of uh, pride of the rest of the tunnel because if it was recessed into the tunnel, obviously it would just disappear. So it has to be a little bit kind of forwardly placed. So I kind of get it just, just the bare minimum amount so you can see the black but not the little rim that it kind of forms as it sticks out of the slide, but whatever. Like I say, this isn't really something that you're going to be looking at too close, I wouldn't have thought. From a distance, at least, it looks pretty good. If anyone's going to be looking at this park in depth, it's probably going to be the tower and the rides themselves and the entrance building, I suppose. So I think we're probably going to be all right. I think we'll be all right. It's probably not the best thing then to be advertising this in a video, but I guess you saw me building it, so you already know the secrets, <laughs> the dark secrets, literally the dark secrets, the black, whatever. So, uh, <laughs> so that's kind of the main two towers done, or at least the main tower and one of the side towers done. Can build another one here. I thought I'd distinguish it from the other one by making it slightly further away from the main one, and uh, we can add some more sort of peripheral structures. I didn't really have a fancy building this other thing all over again, so I just copied the little tower from before. You can see those. I really, I quite like the way the climbing wall came out. Actually, I just again made that using the arch shapes, just the very small angular arch shapes, just recess them at weird angles to create this illusion of a climbing wall. And you know what? I think it turned out quite nicely in the end. And then we can add some little structural flourishes to the to the rest of the structure, just to kind of make it a little bit more detailed, a little bit more interesting looking, I suppose. Um, a lot of people like to make when people make play areas in Planet Coaster, people often go for pirate themes. I guess that's because a lot of the wooden parts a look a bit piratey with all these ropes and stuff, and also pirate pirate themed stuff generally is made of wood so it's quite easy but the number of like you see a lot you see a, I feel like I've seen a disproportionately high number of pirate themed play areas compared to say western themed ones which again like quite wood heavy things I feel like there's a lot of uh, innuendo that could be derived from this and it's it's not very pleasant in the context of a children's player but uh yeah just like one final little tunnel just there and then we can add a third small tower and I think that's pretty much good so I, I thought about leaving that tube up there at like not that like that at first but again i didn't really like the way it just looked like a bare tube so we added those modular pieces just to make it all the overall look a little bit more convincing and that's pretty much it for the actual main structure of this the only thing that's left to do or oh, actually i said there i spoke too soon i forgot we added this other slide here um I, I say I forgot because I'm not actually doing this live. This isn't actually, I'm, I don't, don't know if any of you knew this, but I'm not actually playing the game live as I record this because I don't play, I can't play Planet Coaster this quickly. Um, I, 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 I do crank up on it. I always have a good 17 or so Red Bulls just to really get the footage moving, but I do I do have to speed it up in post-op. Post-op. In um, post... In fact, is there even a is there even a suffix, or do we just say post in videos? I don't know. I'm in a total mind blank right now. It's because I work in like the medical field, so I'm used to saying the words post op to people. So whenever I say post, I often automatically want to say op, unless I'm talking about you know literal post like letters. This was kind of a weird tangent, wasn't it? Story of my life, really, with this series. So I thought I'd put some sand down to uh, form the base of this play area because kids running around, they'll fall over. Kids are like, as I've said before, are like drunken suicide machines, okay? So we've got to make this as, got to make this as safe as possible. Hence why I've got a very low railing connecting this to the train tracks. Probably probably a design flaw there. I, probably had, I should probably add some hedges to separate this from the train. But at the same time, you know, when I was, like I say, when I was a kid, I, I loved seeing trains and stuff. And I guess having that small metal fence is it's small enough it's tall enough i should say for most children to not get uh, be able to climb over it i think it's nice so i'm placing here actually i'm placing some barrels <laughs> because in i feel like in i don't know if this is an english thing but most english players particularly wooden ones they have these kind of stilts they kind of get taller and taller and then smaller and smaller that you guess i guess you just run over they're like part of an obstacle course sort of setup so i thought i'd just add those there i added some paths here as well like the invisible ones just so it would show people walking through the through the play area, and also we could add some benches as well, which can't be added to anything other than paths. I feel like that's something that eventually will get patched out of the game because it seems weird to me that you can't place benches anywhere. But whatever, right now you can't place benches anywhere other than paths. That's the other reason I'm having a path there, even though there's no way of getting rid of those sides to the path, which makes it a little bit of an eyesore. But 
I think it's a worthwhile one because it means that when when the park is open, guests will be you'll be able to see guests walking through the park and stuff. So I think it's worth it. It's an acceptable compromise, I think. So uh, yeah, just adding some final touches, adding the greatest flag in the world. I think we can all agree. Um, not going to be any uh, any disagreement among that. I mean, to be honest, like it or not, I feel like the British flag. I really like the way the British flag looks. Uh, the Union flag. I get people are going to get annoyed with saying, "Oh, it's called the Union flag or the Union Jack." It's not called the Union Jack because it's not at sea. But then this is a pirate themed thing, so maybe it could be classed as sea. It's a rabbit hole I don't want to get down. But uh, I think it's kind of a nice looking flag. Uh, the North Mariana Islands, though, probably the best flag. I think we can all agree. Though I do like the United States flag as well. I think just any kind of flag that looks kind of interesting that isn't just consisting of three stripes or a simple cross, which is what the England flag is. Well, Wales. Wales has a good flag. I mean, credit where credit is due. The Welsh have an amazing flag. This is um, this is my Planet Coaster series, by the way, for those just tuning in. I love that. I've said that a lot. Like, for those just joining us, is it, do people just join YouTube videos and just click like three quarters of the way through? Like, I'm going to click the 15 minutes 30 mark and then start from there. So yeah, just finishing off the finishing off the supporting structures. Obviously, I don't have to be too neat with this. I can clip them straight through the slide because obviously this is actually a solid structure, so it doesn't need to realistically not penetrate to the actual skin of the uh, the slide. So just very easy to put those structures in place. And that's pretty much it. There's the play area. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this episode, really. I mean, 15 to 20 minutes is what I'm trying to aim for with the Planet Coaster series video. So just a few more finishing touches. We have this weird sort of gap between the pathway and the play area. So maybe I should have opened this up and add a sep a second section to the park where we could add sli uh, swings and slides and a roundabout, stuff like that. But uh, I thought in the end we'll just add some planters and stuff to close off this gap. And I think that looked pretty good as well. So there's me filling it in there. And uh, that's it. So let me know. Obviously, there's, there's a bit of a pace break compared to what we've done before, where we've been doing roller coasters and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like it's kind of a nice little structure nonetheless. So there's a little very nauseating shot. I say that a lot, don't I? And a, here's a nice, lovely little nauseating camera angle as we lurch around the park at high speed. But uh, yeah, little overview here, what's been going on so far. Just doing a nice, very quick walk around to show you what's been going on. You can play the video at kind of 0.25 speed if you wish to uh, get a better sense of what's going on. But I think the ADHD among the people who have what I like to call YouTube ADHD, which is a real condition, who just feel the need to just constantly hit, um, is it J and L or J and J? I think it's J and L that let you skip forwards and backwards 10 seconds. I'm always, I'm pathological for that. Here's this little, we'll finish this commentary off now with a little photograph of the finished park itself. And I want to, I thought I'd finish off this, this, um, we just did a little tour, but I thought another way of doing a nice fun tour is to show you kind of the view of the park from the biggest coast of the kind of this little tour of the uh, the south side. Is it the south side or the west side? It's the west side, isn't it? So I'll leave you with the little POV. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I would very much appreciate it if you could, as well as if you wanted to leave a like, a like and comment on this video. There is also links to Patreon in the description if you wanted to uh, help support the channel, you know. And uh, there'll be links on screen at the end. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and then the rest of your week.